name's Mel. Um, some of you here will know me, but for those who don't, I'd like to start with a brief explanation of why I haven't been around for the last 10 years. In 2007, at 5.30am in the morning, my front doors were smashed in by the police. I'd been involved in a very controversial and hard-hitting campaign against the building of an animal research facility at Oxford University. And as a result of that, I was to spend 10 years in prison and on licence. And during that time, I was not allowed to speak to any of my friends, including people like John, who you heard from earlier, and many, many other people who I campaigned with for many, many years. And it was because we had had the temerity to speak out against vivisection at the largest and most prestigious academic institution in this country and possibly the world, Oxford University. Now let me get this off my chest for a start. I'm very, very, very angry at what they did to me, but I'm far more angry about what they've done to the thousands and thousands and millions of animals that are suffering in academic institutions, contract testing laboratories and other places in this country every single day. Their suffering outweighs mine every single minute of every single day. things here to say that I want to get out of the way first before I go on to anything else. I called my tie, I entitled my talk Monkeys, Rats and Why I Won't Turn My Back in the Bottom on Laboratory Animals. And some of you may remember that in 2006 BBC Two made a documentary entitled Monkeys, Rats and Me and I was the object to that film and the campaign to stop the Oxford Animal Lab. And one of the things I remember is that halfway through the film, they brought in a new director. And it turned out that that director was an apologist for vivisection. And what followed was a complete and utter damnation of not just me personally, but the whole campaign and the whole anti-vivisection movement. And it was orchestrated at government level. And I can tell you why I know that. And this is how far it goes. During 2000, and from 2005, the contractors for the Oxford Animal Lab pulled out and the building work stopped. In effect, we would won. There was a part built laboratory that was going to house and does house thousands of animals now. And we had stopped it. We had stopped that building. And I was immensely proud of what we'd achieved. But it was the start of something very sinister. Monkeys, Rats and Me was part of a programme and part of a government initiative to stop us from ending unscientific research in this country. Speak never claimed to be anti-science, we never claimed to be anti-human or anti-progress. What we were anti is the torturing of innocent animals. at this point in about 2005 from an inside source at the university that Tony Blair had arrived at Oxford and he was there to meet contractors, security staff and others to decide the best way forward in getting the Oxford lab built and making sure that vivisection could continue there and that's exactly what they did that's exactly what they did and within a few months of that contractors returned to the site after 18 months and I'll tell you now, never in this country have I seen this before, and never again do I hope to see it again. But workers wearing balaclavas put that lab up. They were hidden away like terrorists, the terrorists we were supposed to be. These workers hid their faces from us while they put that animal torture centre up. And that was at the behest of a government, a new Labour government, a Prime Minister Tony Blair personally involved. Lord Sainsbury, who donated heavily to new Labour, also made sure that that laboratory got built. Now I say, and I say this very clearly, I'm very proud of what we did there and what we tried to achieve and what we almost did succeed in doing. And I'm proud of the people in the animal rights movement that have stood up for many, many decades fighting to release animals from the tyranny of human beings. 
And this is not an anti-science thing. This is about respect and rights. Animals deserve rights. That's why we've got an animal rights movement. Nothing else we do. I want rights for animals. I don't want to be told by anyone, any government minister or any apologist for the vivisection industry that this is necessary. It is not necessary. This is the 21st century. There are scientists out there and people with a technological know-how to put this shameful period in our history to bed once and for all. But we can't do it and they can't do it without us. We all need to be active all the time. Yes. It's no good just being a keyboard warrior. It's no good just sitting at home, sitting there on your computer. That's not enough. You've got to get out there. You've got to fight for these animals and you've got to do it like you mean it. It normally just comes to me, but there, there are some things that I do want to quote. Oxford University um, have released their figures for 2017, and it's over 269,000 animals that suffered there in 2017. It's an 18,000 increase on the year before. This is not acceptable. This is just not acceptable. And we should be demanding, we should be saying, we should be demonstrating, we should be fighting to show that this is not acceptable. All of us, all the time. And I know that we have a movement now, a new emergent, young movement that is based around veganism and is based around the idea that animals do deserve respect. I don't support this movement. I support the, the new vegan movement. But it's not enough. It's not enough on its own. It will never be enough on its own. Because let me tell you, there are people in the home of the government that don't give a shit what happens to these animals. They don't give a shit. And they prove that with us. So what are you going to do with these people? What are we going to do? Just saying, well, okay, you know, we'll keep promoting our vegan lifestyle. Good, we should all be doing that. We should all be doing that. But believe me, there are some hard-nosed bastards out there who don't care. Who just don't care. And they exist in the government. And we came up against them. I went to prison because of them. And I'm not ashamed of that. I can look all you in the eye and say, I am not ashamed of the fact I went to prison for animals. I am not ashamed. and have put other people there, like John who heard earlier, like many of the, of the people that I call my friends and my cameras, those people I wasn't allowed to talk to for so long because my life's conditions, so I couldn't. And here's an example of how far it went. You see this t-shirt? A few months ago, before my life's conditions ended, I was in Northampton, where I live, and I got stopped on the street by a guy who was wearing one of these, a speak t-shirt. This guy had never been on a demo against Oxford University in his life. Never! He brought it off the internet. The next time I turned up for my probation interview under my life and conditions, I was threatened with re-arrest and sent back to prison. And why? Because a police officer had seen me talking to someone with a speak t-shirt on. Now why is that? Why is that? Why are you so afraid? of people talking to each other about vivisection, about what happens to animals, Money. about slaughterhouses, about horse racing, about whatever it is. Why are you so bloody afraid? I know why you're afraid. You know why they're afraid. They're afraid because we're right and they are bloody wrong. the 1990s and the early 2000s, this animal liberation movement, the one that I feel so proud to be part of, we had them on the run. We had them beat. And if, if it hadn't been for the government, if it hadn't been for the police and other agencies, that Oxford Dam wouldn't be open. HLS would have been shut down. And we would have been looking at a new future where science did work and and research that benefited human beings and not just the pharmaceutical industry. But they weren't going to let that happen. They weren't going to countenance that because the money was in animal research. 
as much as it is in meat eating, the slaughterhouse industry, the horse race industry, come what may. Abusing animals is profitable. Is profitable. And that's all that some of these people care about. Money. And that's why it's important to think about what you are, who you are, and why you're here. You're animal rights people. You're not apologists for the welfare industry. You're not apologists for the vivisectionists. You're not apologists for the slaughterhouse worker. You're animal rights people. You believe animals deserve rights. That's what makes you powerful. And don't be put off by what happened to people like me and John and others in the past. We didn't do it out of any sense of self and neither did anybody else. We did it as part of a movement. I'm part of you. You're part of me. We do it together. Yeah. Um, I know I might sound a tad angry. <laughs> and that is because I am a tad fucking angry. Um, I spent... When I came out of prison and I faced the five years of life, I had a long time to think, you know, because I wasn't allowed to talk to people, so I had a long time to think about who I was, what I was doing, what I was doing. And it's easy to become twisted and angry to the point where you're, in effect, you're ineffective, but I'm not going to allow that to happen because I'm not doing their bloody dirty work for them. <laughs> Whatever they did to me, they did. But let me tell you, and I can see you standing there, you bloody well failed! You failed! You all failed! I'm back here now at Motion, and I'm proud to be back at Motion, because you're the people that make the difference, and I'm proud to be part of this movement and part of what you all are. So, in finishing, I want to say this. Monkeys, rats and me, and why I won't turn my back on the voluntary animals. None of us, none of us here, not one single one of you, must ever turn you back, turn your backs. I know you won't, but you mustn't. Don't be afraid to speak out. Don't be afraid to stand up. Don't be afraid to challenge the law. The law, with regard to animals, is wrong, utterly, utterly wrong. Animals deserve rights, they can have rights. And I don't care what they say. I don't care what they say about that. They are wrong. They are completely wrong. We are the movement. And we are the people, the individuals and collectively the movement, that are going to change things for the future. We are going to change the world. 40 years on, I still believe that. And you know what, if I live to another 40 years, I'll still believe it. But one thing I hope I live long enough for, and it's been a dream of mine, that one day I'll go into a courtroom and in the dock I'll be a vivisector. Yes. And he'll be stand, or she will be stand charged with torturing animals. And I, I dream about this, standing there and watching them being led down to the cells like I was, and being charged with destroying sentient life for no good reason. So please, please, don't be afraid. Please, please, never ever turn your backs. I know you won't. I'll always be with you. I'll always be there. We'll always be there. Together, together, we will achieve this. Please, never ever turn your backs. Thank you very much. Yeah.